server sent events can be used to transmit data from the server to the client in a unidirectional manner that proved to be useful for use cases such as live feed, logging, and other use cases as well. In this video slash crash course, I want to discuss the following. And guys, you guys start seeing some chapters on YouTube where you can jump into the interesting part of the video. There's code. There's so much good stuff here, pros and cons in this, co uh, in this content. So feel free to jump through the video. All right, so I'm going to discuss HTTP because it's very important. Server sent events are built on top of HTTP, at least partially, right? So we're going to discuss how HTTP work, 1011, and how this is critical for a long left connection. I'm going to talk about WebSockets a little bit, very briefly, because they you will be left into a state where you don't know which one to pick, and I, and I wanted to help kind of guide you there. I can't make the decision for you, unfortunately, but... You can you can watch my WebSockets video to learn more, but it's really tough decision, right? Uh, gonna talk about it a little bit, so that's very important. Server sent events, obviously the meat and potato about this thing, how this works, really. Uh, it's not really rocket science; it's very simple. Then I'm gonna go jump into the code, so you can jump into the, directly the code. I'm gonna use Node.js, and 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 this thing is so simple to build, guys, because it's the trick is to know how to unlock it essentially right so i'm going to build a notches uh, express server i'm not going to consume it from the browser window using raw event source that's the api in the browser and then finally i'm going to talk about the pros and cons about this se which is server sentiment because guess what nothing's perfect how about we jump into it guys so how the first thing we're going to discuss is http 1.0 back in the 90s way back 1995 we invented the HTTP protocol and we tried to be smart. And we said, okay, in order to send a GET request, I'm going to establish a TCP connection, three-way handshake, all that jazz between the client and the server. I'm going to connect to port 80 because the HTTP protocol. Uh, have the TCP open, send the GET request, wait, and then once the GET result, the res server sends the result, I'm going to close the connection. Okay, that's the design. That was always been the case since HTTP 1.0. And then if I want to send another request, open another connection, send the get request for the image, and then wait for the result, and then close the connection and do it all over all over again. That was very bad. We quickly fixed that in HTTP 1.1. And the reason is because TCP open and close is, is very, very expensive because we talked about the three-way handshake. Check out this video right here. But in a nutshell, that's very... We were worrying about the memory occupied by the TCP, so we don't want to leave it open, but we forgot the performance, so we got a hit, right? We fixed that problem with HTTP 1.1 very quickly. We said, okay, let's leave the connection open, and there is like a keep a live header. By default, HTTP 1.1, if you don't send that, it is by default open. So now, open the connection, and then send the first GET request, receive a response, uh, send another GET request, Receive the response, send another get request, and finally you want to close it if you want to, optionally, right? And that's it. That's how HTTP 1.1 works. And based on that, having a, a running TCP connection that we can use all over and over and over again became very, very efficient, right? And now WebSocket came into that. Okay, I want to reuse the WebSocket connection so that I can send information from the server to the client and client server bidirectional. We talked about that, right? So to do WebSocket, we do the same thing. We open the connection and we send the first request, which is a GET 1.1, uh, HTTP 1.1 upgrade. And then we receive a response from the server saying, okay, I support WebSocket. Let's switch protocol. But that is completely revamping the protocol. It's not no longer HTTP, right? Now, uh, the client can send information to the server. The server can send information to the client. The server can send some more information to the, the client. The client can send some more information. The server can send. There is no order. It's bidirectional. That's WebSocket, essentially, in a nutshell, right? And here is like, we're, we we kind of hooked into the underlying TCP connection. It's a little bit more than that, the WebSocket protocol. We, it's, it, it, there is some overhead attached to it compared to server side event, uh, server sent events. I'm going to talk about that. But in a nutshell, uh, it, it is 
we're using this in a bidirectional manner. It's different than raw TCP. It's it's a protocol by itself. It's a well defined protocol. Okay, so what is server sent event, guys? So server sent event, guys, is the ability for the server. I don't really need bidirectional. I don't want the client to communicate with the server and server communicate. I don't want this. I want only the server. I know the connection will always be unidirectional. The server will send me stuff. So what do you do? Same thing. You open a connection. It has to be HTTP 1.1, right? Because keep alive, because persistent connection. And the first thing you send as a client is not upgrade, not anything. You have to send text event stream. That is the trigger that tells the server that you want to establish a a, bi, a unidirectional server sent event channel. So the server will receive that and will say, okay, and will behave server, and you can build this right now, is here's how you need to respond. You need to respond with content that do, does this, the following. The header, the content type is text slash event stream. JSON will not work. Normal text will not work. Has to be event stream. So the client actually understand that you understand that it, it needs this. The second thing, it has to be transfer encoding chunk because guess what? We're playing on, on a long polling uh, game here where we don't know how long is this response. So we say, okay, let's chunk this up and we don't know when is the last packet. So otherwise we will have sent the content, content length uh, header, right? Just like, okay, this is a 700 byte, but we don't know. So we say chunks. And then what, what happened after that is the server keeps sending more chunks, keeps sending more chunks, keeps, that's it. That's what server sent events, not rocket science at all. And we're going to build one guys. <laughs> so that's uh, essentially the idea. And then finally, once you're done, you can close the connection. Either the server can close the connection or the client can close the connection. There are a little bit uh, tricky things when it comes to HTTP 1.1, especially in a browser, since you have like maximum six connections per domain with this weird hack that the browsers have with HTTP 1.1. We don't have this problem with HTTP 2 because we have like one beautiful TCP connection and we have streams. What are the use cases? What can I use this for? Well, you can use this for live feeds, especially YouTube videos, right? I'm not saying YouTube use that, like streaming, right? If you're streaming content from the server, you know that you don't want anything else, right? I'm not sending that. I just want to open the connection and then everything is going to come from the server. So live feed, uh, blogging, live blogs and conferences, for example, that's a perfect use case. Wait, I don't want to use... A heavy WebSocket protocol where it has like these additional headers and stuff. I want just like these lightweight packets sent by the server to the client. So that's live feed. Live feed is very good use case. Another problem is like, hey, I wanna I I want to send a job to the server, but I want a server to update me on the progress of this job. Let's say this is a, an asynchronous long job executing event sourcing or server sent event is very good use case like you can show a progress the server can send you their progress so oh a 20 percent complete i'm 30 percent complete i'm 40 percent complete yeah is it easy to implement i'm gonna say no because you have to really build it to really build it i don't know if that makes sense or not Logging, yeah, the same thing. Okay, you sent one request and you, you want to stream the logs on the server or you want to stream what is happening on the back end. So, yeah, use cases. Finally, code time. So, coding, guys. So, what are we going to build here? We're going to build a raw server side server sent event client server we're using Node.js from scratch. And then from the client, we're going to start consuming it. How about we jump into it? All right, guys, let's jump into it and build our application. So I'm going to go ahead and open a brand new folder. I'm going to my JavaScript playground because I have all my projects right here. Go check the uh, repo and there guys says server sent events, right? And then just like that, open this puppy up. And what we're going to do is create my... All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create an index.js file, our beautiful index.js file, and then we're going to do the usual stuff. const app equal 
uh, express uh, require express right and then app dot get we'll just create a very simple server here that literally just responds with responders and hello this is just to just to get the the ball rolling okay so i'm then gonna listen on port 80 80 console.log listening on 8080 that's it very simple that's the simplest thing we can build right so let's go ahead and initialize npm and all that jazz npm init dash y uh, npm and install that's it we're just gonna install uh, express i think i have to say npm install express right all right npm installed express installed Let's go ahead and run. No JS. All right. Let's check this thing out. I'm gonna go ahead and do localhost 8080. We're gonna say hello. So Hussein, where is the server sent events that you talked about? Well, let's get to it, guys. So the first thing we're gonna do here is we said that to to unlock server sent event at the back end. We need a get request, a, a special get request. I can use the root, but I'm not gonna because I, I want these to be different. So I'm gonna do a stream endpoint, right? And I'm gonna do this. So this will be the, uh, the response. And what we need to do here is really just set the header that is content type. And what is it called? It's called text event stream that's the trick guys that's the most important thing once we have that what we need to do next is literally just use the method right we shouldn't use end we shouldn't use send this is http specific we need to use write so that we are constantly writing to the same tcp connection uh, packets right so that's the trick here okay um, and we can and, and we can write the following uh, text, right? It has to be. That's the trick here. It has to be data, and then colon, and then space, and then you put your garbage here number. So it's like okay, so plus hello. Very simple stuff here. Okay. That's it. Obviously, where are the streams? This is one event. If you want to send to another event, just do it twice, okay? And we're going to do a timer and all that jazz in a minute now. But let's do this. I'm going to put a debug point here and refresh this puppy right now. And just like that, I am going to the client. Refresh this puppy. This will work, obviously. But now I'm going to open developer tools, go to console, clear this up. And then I'm going to do let sse which is the server side event equal new event source this is this is a built-in thing in the browser and if i do http localhost 8080 slash stream i will send that special get request that effect that sending that new creating that new will send that get request with the uh, event stream as content type guys right just like that we should see as we said or look at that we got we got a debugger i'm not gonna press continue yet i am going to hook the event how do i hook the event just like we do with whoopsocket on message equal console.log right basically what this does is like this is giving it a function i give it console.log so to print everything that we receive from the server okay and now we wait, go back, and we release the Kraken. And just like that, there you go. So here's what I did. <laughs> I forgot this. This is another part of the protocol. You have to add two new lines to signal that this is uh, an, an event, OK? So data has to be like that. There's a space after it. And then you have to do that, right? So now we have received it. Look at that, we received two, because I refreshed it twice. Look at that, where's the data? 
Where's the data? Hello. This is awesome. Let me refresh the whole thing again. Clear the whole thing again. And then do it. Clear. Wire the message. We got the request. Release the Kraken. And get just like that, we got the message. Look at that. All right. Let's spice things a little bit, guys. Let's spice things up. And I'm going to do a function here called send. It takes the response. And it's a set timeout. And literally calls itself. And every second. What does it do? It does exactly that. And then let's create just a variable here. Let i equal zero. Hello. Mm, let's do text here just for beauty purposes. And that's it. We do that. And then here we call send. And obviously we pass the response. How will we try this? What will this, what, what will this do, guys? This will basically forever will keep sending that stuff. So I didn't I don't need to debug anymore, right? So we're gonna call this once and then every second we're gonna write an event, right? Obviously you need an, a condition where you stop and kill the connection by doing res, re, not connection necessarily, but stop the events, the series of them by doing res.end. But look at that. <laughs> I keep streaming and this is another feature in the event source uh, library. It, even if you destroy the backend connection, the client will keep connecting, will keep connecting. And that's pretty neat. Let's refresh this again so I can show you, right? Before we show the, that. Look at that. Connected. Immediately, I can receive, okay, hello, zero, zero, zero. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I did a mistake. I forgot to increment this thing. All right. Boom, boom. That should be better. And now, look at, look at this, guys. I killed the server. The client just resumed like there is no tomorrow that's a pretty nice feature unlike it's almost like a, it's a stateless protocol it's almost statelessly designed unlike websocket if you kill the websocket connection tough luck man you have to re-establish it yourself right so that that's it guys look at that that's that's a pretty neat feature all right so we talked about that so the the trick here is is this the text event and the chunk encoding, right? Because we get, we're going to receive, keep receiving content on this thing, right? And these are the event stream. You can you can even visualize it on the uh, on the dev side of things. Awesome, guys. So that's it. That's basically server sent event in a nutshell. How about we jump back into the slides? And uh, I'm going to provide the source code for you guys, obviously. And uh, yeah, how about we jump into it, guys? All right, guys, so we did server sent events, we built some sor some server, we built a client, and, and then it was a very simple designed uh, architecture, right? However, is it perfect? No, it's not perfect. So how about we jump into the pros and cons of this thing? The pros first, it is lightweight, and I have to give it that. I even wire shark that stuff. I'm gonna make it another video about wire sharking server sent event. It is very lightweight. The, the packets are 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 so small because there are no headers, guys. Unlike the WebSocket, WebSockets have its own headers, its own protocol, its own thing that you they have to send it with everything, and it even have this concept of a logical connection and a logical close and logical open. So there is an overhead with WebSockets that you don't have with server sent events. So that might be a good thing if you want a lightweight thing. Obviously, some cases where you don't want it over TCP with UDP, specifically Quick. Oh my God, if you can get this server sent event over Quick, or HTTP3, that would be the kind of the winning lottery thing because it's a very thin, lightweight protocol. Okay, it is compatible by HTTP, HTTP, obviously, because we're sending a GET request, so it's HTTP compatible HTTP, and it's also compatible with HTTP2. This is not true with WebSocket, by the way, guys. With WebSockets, we did something with HTTP2. We had to invent a new RFC to solve this problem with WebSockets. Well, WebSockets, what, what it does, if I establish a connection between moi, the client, and a server, 
we, first of all, we establish the CCP connection in HTTP2, and then we create streams for every request. So get request gets a new stream and like a channel inside that TCB connection. WebSockets, by design, it was designed to basically hijack the entire TCP connection, which is extremely wasteful in case of HTTP2, right? So they are coming up with a new protocol. I'm not sure if it's it's up or not, but we want essentially to, to hijack one stream for, for, uh, for, uh, for WebSockets. Server sent events don't have this problem. You don't have this problem because by design, you're gonna hijack one stream and you will just inject everything in that stream and will just work, right? So that's that why that's why people say that you can see a big warning on Mozilla websites like don't use server sent event with HTTP one because you will get quickly you will run out of uh, number of connection because they you have a num limited number of connections so use your HTTP two so you can just uh, use a stream and or, or multiple streams right so that's much 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 better so it's compatible HTTP two and HTTP right so that's a that's another advantage of this guide if you want to learn more about HTTP HTTP in general and HTTP two is specific check out the playlist right here so you can go or, or the end of screen at the end of screen i'm gonna link to the playlist to learn more about all this stuff firewall friendly why because it's HTTP, http right i'm talking about encrypt unencrypted stuff right because if it's if it's encrypted firewalls cannot do anything about it but if it's unencrypted it is firewall friendly just like websockets because hey i'm, I'm connected through port 80 Please allow me. It's a GET request. It's a normal GET request. And once you establish the TCP connection, everything is just dandy, right? Cons. What's bad about this? Proxying is a little bit tricky. Not as hard as WebSocket. Well, WebSocket, we just gave up. And he said, you know what? Layer 4 proxying all the way. With, with server sent events, we had we can do layer seven proxying. We can terminate the TLS and even re recent continue resenting the events. But it is you need to specifically set set some headers and let the connection be alive. Already by default, it should be one one and two is the connection is always alive. But it is a little bit tricky to implement. Right? I'm not gonna say it's 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 straightforward. Layer seven uh, is a little bit challenging, exactly as we said, right? Layer four is is the easiest, obviously. Just stream everything into the layer four and just blindly address the packets to the, to the backend without looking at them. But layer seven, if you will start to make sense of the packet and you look and you start decrypting and you and you make decisions, then you have to worry about timeouts and stuff, right? Because it was like, okay, how how far should can I open this connection and leave it open? Because Server sent event, you have to keep the connection open. And, and, and if there is no data coming from the server, what do you do? Do you, do you kill the connection? Probably not. So you have to go to the proxy again. So back to the proxying is tricky. And then kind of tweak the timeouts to kind of increase them, right? Especially, these are special timeouts. Just, just keep a live timeout. Make it as large as possible, even in idle times, right? Because guess what? The client cannot send anything. So the client cannot keep the connection alive. It's the responsibility of the server. So if the server is not well written in a way to, to, to kind of send pings to the client so it wakes up, then you have to kind of tweak the timeouts at the client, at, at the proxy side, right? Whether this is a proxy or a reverse proxy. Okay. Uh, it, is, uh, it is stateful. Yeah, yeah, it is a stateful at the server side because yeah, once I send a request, I am I am hooked to one server, right? So it is it is hard to scale. It's not as hard as WebSockets though, because with WebSockets there are two way communication. With bidirectional, with unidirectional, you can design a server that just does the same thing over and over again. So it is. I might. I might take a question mark here and says, okay, it might be actually stateless in this case, right? Because yeah, I will just uh, forward the proxy to a server and then 
all this data is coming from the server to me to that connection but what happened if i kill the connection right we we saw event source just attempt to reconnect again if we reconnect again we're going to go to another server yeah the state is different in this case but if you have yeah so so whatever the the state at the server is going to be reset so if you don't care and your architecture is stateless then you might get away with it you can build it in a stateless manner do you have to use server sent events uh, depends on your use case really I mean, live feed, we talked about live feed, especially with UDP. My God, this is really good. Right? But TCP, yeah, there are still every event sent from the server need to be acknowledged by the client at the TCP uh, transmission control layer. So that's that's a cost, right? Uh, however, WebSockets, right? It's Most of the time, if you think about it, I think... That's my personal opinion. I think server sent event is kind of limited, right? Because there, I, I cannot think of a way of a use case where it's only purely server sent events, right? There might be in the future, I might need the client to send information in the, in the process, in the, during the communication, um, uh, duration and in that case I might need WebSocket so might as well just use WebSocket and use bi-directional in this case right and yeah you might argue that WebSocket is a little bit there is an overhead to it with the HTTP there are no headers in WebSocket but there are its own protocol headers right it's not a lot but it is if you if you accumulate them they are they, they are they can be they, they can be significant, right? Compared to the raw service sent event, which is just a bunch of strings. The only thing they required us to send is this data delimited thing. A little bit, I didn't like that, to be honest. I, I thought this is a little bit hacky. It's like, why do you need to send me just data string? Oh, I don't know, whatever. There is also long polling, which reminds me a lot of server sent events. It's very similar, very, very similar almost identical to be honest where long polling is like okay i'm gonna send a request but i'm gonna wait wait for the server the server will not respond back to the client until it gets an information right but the server and log polling case only have one shot right because it's a, still it's a request response kind of a thing right so long polling can be implemented at the http layer it's just the server kind can just delay the response it says okay i'm not going to respond to you just so we can we don't want to over uh, over saturate the network right so that for the less over saturation you use this for multiple events coming only one, one direction you use this for multiple requests from the client and one response use this for bi-direction it was websocket so to me i think i'm gonna always use websocket to be honest i'm i don't see a use case for this i might be wrong let me know in the comment section below guys if you have used it in one of your use cases i would love to hear that summary so yeah guys it was a quick course crash course on server sent event and we talked about http one zero we talked about the problem about that we quickly solved it as engineers and we came up with http 11 as a uh, uh, keep a live connection and persisted connection and then we said okay let's hijack that tcp connection so we can use websockets obviously we made a big mistake with that because http2 is very inefficient to hijack that tcp connection so we need websocket at a stream level we're still working that out and rfc i forgot which rfc is that i'm gonna reference it below i even make the video about it i'm gonna reference it right here or maybe in the editing uh, server sent events we talked about that and we did some code yay and we also talked about pros and cons guys what do you think about this this technology would you are you gonna use it are you not gonna use it? are you sticking to web sockets are you sticking with normal http because request response is all you need let me know in all this comments in the comment section below i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome subscribe to this channel for more back in the engineering stuffy and software engineering all that stuff we discuss in this channel so check out all the content and in this channel i'm gonna see you in the next one you guys stay awesome goodbye